We all know that over 70% of our planet is blanketed by bodies of water. But few are aware that almost all of that is accounted for by our oceans and only 3% of the water on the entire planet is fresh. This perspective should give us a renewed respect for this invaluable resource based on the understanding of how rare, statistically speaking, it actually is. Rarer still, among the already limited amount of fresh water on our planet, is the water in our lakes, which make up only 0.3% of the Earth's freshwater supply. With that in mind, it is easy to understand that when it comes to aquatic disasters, the vast majority occur in our oceans and disasters of the anomalous kind, like the one we will explore in this video, almost never occur on our lakes. However, on November 21st, 1902, perhaps the most infamous of all unexplained freshwater incidents took place on not just any lake, but a great lake. The Great Lakes of North America are a series of large interconnected freshwater lakes in the central regions of the northeastern parts of the United States and southern parts of Canada. These massive lakes connect to the Atlantic Ocean via the St. Lawrence River and span a whopping 94,250 square miles, containing an almost incomprehensible six quadrillion gallons of water. Lakes Superior, Michigan, Huron, Erie, and Ontario are so vast, they are often compared to oceans themselves, seemingly endless watery horizons that can take days to cross. Our fateful story took place on the largest of all the Great Lakes, Lake Superior, which covers over 31,000 square miles, representing almost one-third of the total area covered by these bodies of water. Lake Superior is known to be especially treacherous, with surprise gusts of wind creating waves up to 40 feet high, and storms being a constant companion to all those who sail through it. The Great Lakes region is the grave site of over 10,000 sunken vessels. But today, we are not here to talk about shipwrecks. We are here to talk about ghost ships. Ghost ships are ships that have disappeared without a trace, in most cases believed to have been lost to storms or some other misfortune, only to reappear eerily sailing without a crew, and no obvious signs of distress. These mysterious apparitions have baffled historians and scientists alike since the 18th century, when the first ghost ship, the Flying Dutchman, was reported. From then on, every once in a while we hear tales of crewless ships aimlessly drifting through the sea, only to disappear into a deep fog or storm, again reappearing somewhere briefly perpetuating the haunting and terrifying unsuspecting sailors. The tale of the ghost ship SS Bannockburn begins in Middlesbrough, England, where she was built for the Montreal Transportation Company in 1893. The Bannockburn was a 244-foot, single-crew, steel bulk freight steamer, a tough cargo ship thought to be built better than most vessels on the Great Lakes at the time, lined with a steel superstructure. The Bannockburn had a few confirmed groundings in her nine-year career, but none were serious, and she was well repaired after each. The SS Bannockburn's last trip began on November 20th of 1902, when she departed from Port Arthur, Michigan, heading toward Midland, Ontario. She was carrying a cargo of 85,000 bushels of Manitoba wheat and was to use a well-charted shipping lane for the voyage. The Bannockburn ominously grounded on a mud or sand bank while leaving Port Arthur that day, but was freed by the early morning of Friday, November 21st, when she resumed her journey. Nothing was ever heard from the SS Bannockburn again, though sightings of her continue to this day. Weather Bureau records suggest that a significant storm swept over Lake Superior from the northwest between the 21st and 22nd, with gusts of wind of up to 50 miles an hour and 20-foot crests. However, 
another 40 vessels sailed through the well-known shipping lane over the same period, none having been lost, and all having survived much more severe storms unscathed in the same area. By November 26th, fellow captains and even newspapers began expressing concern for the Bannockburn, which was already a few days late to her destination in Midland. The following day, when the Canadian grain carrier, the Algonquin, arrived in Toronto, Captain McMaw reported seeing the Bannockburn 40 miles southeast of Isle Royale on the 21st during the storm. He was very familiar with the Bannockburn as they often traverse the same routes, further noting that despite the major storm, he noted no distress from the ship or its crew. He said that the Bannockburn simply disappeared into the mist a few minutes later. In the following days, many claims poured into the news outlets, mostly claiming that the Bannockburn had been sighted aground on Caribou Island, Michipicoten Island, or on the east shore of Lake Superior. The steamer Majestic reportedly sighted her ashore on the mainland opposite Michipicoten Island. Tugs were dispatched to comb the area for evidence of the Bannockburn, but none was found. These multiple reported sightings would plant the seed for her legend as a flying Dutchman. Based on the accounts of the Algonquin and other ships present at the time, as well as the failure to find any evidence of wreckage nor casualties, the Bannockburn was declared lost. Along with her cargo, the loss amounted to $210,000, a grand sum when adjusted for today's dollars. She had been one of the most profitable grain vessels in the Canadian fleet. On June 19, 1903, a lone life jacket belonging to the SS Bannockburn was recovered near Caribou Island, the only evidence of her demise that has ever been found. Tales of the SS Bannockburn as a ghost ship continued to spread over the years, with sightings near Port Arthur in 1905 and 1907 by a leisure steamer and cargo vessel solidifying its status as a legend of the Great Lakes. Ever since then, over the years, every now and again a fishing vessel or a lone sailor will see the Bannockburn eerily appear on the misty waters of Lake Superior to just as quickly disappear into the fog from where it came. Those who believe the legend say that seeing the ghost ship is a bad omen that brings misfortune. Whether the legend of the ghost ship, SS Bannockburn, is true or not, has been debated for over a century to no avail. But one thing is certain, the tale captures our mind and makes us wonder what could possibly have happened that not only gave birth to, but keeps alive such an eerie tale. And that is why the SS Bannockburn will always be known as the ghost ship of Lake Superior, the greatest among the Great Lakes. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content, it's free and really helps out the channel. Also, if you want to help us in a bigger way, please consider supporting us on Patreon and for less than a cup of coffee a month, assist us in our research and efforts to make good content. Thank you.